Okay, this video marks the first of two that are going to be about balancing equations. Um, in this video, we're going to talk about why we need to balance equations and the um, law of conservation of matter, and talk about what's actually being conserved in a chemical reaction. And then the next video is going to be some examples on how to actually complete the task of balancing equations. So this video, like I said, it's why we need to balance things. Okay, and the principal reason is the law of conservation of matter. And what that means is I cannot create or destroy matter. And when I say matter, obviously I'm talking about atoms. Okay, so when I have, you know, a certain number of atoms of X on one side of a reaction, I need to have um, the same number of X on the other side, on the, um, the right side. So just a quick reaction um, introduction. These on the right side of the arrow, or the arrow meaning a reaction is occurring, okay? Reaction occurs is what that arrow means. It does not mean um, equals. It means a reaction is occurring to form this. So for example, this X, this red X, is going to undergo a reaction to form the green X. Okay, that red X is known as a reactant. It is what reacts. And then when the reaction occurs, we have products remaining. Now, the law of conservation of matter states that the number of atoms that are in the reactants, the total number of atoms in the reactant side of the arrow, the reactant side of the reaction, must be equal to the total number of atoms on the product side of the reaction. Okay, and what that means is I cannot create, I'm, if I have this equal numbers on both sides, that means I didn't create matter, I didn't destroy matter. I didn't create atoms, I did not destroy atoms. Okay, they need to be equal on both sides. Okay, perfect example. If I was to take hydrogen gas plus oxygen gas and I was to form water, okay? If we were to count the number of atoms on each side, I would have, um, let's see, one. I'm just talking about total atoms here. Okay, I have four atoms over here, two hydrogen, two oxygen, and I have only three atoms over here. That right there is automatically unbalanced, meaning this can't happen because it will break the law. All right, we need to have equal amounts on both sides. So what we'll do is we will um, add numbers to this reaction called coefficients. Okay, and these coefficients are numbers that we drop in front of the overall formulas to manipulate the number of atoms on each side. Okay, the subscripts. Okay, this two, that two, that two, and that that one, we cannot move those numbers, we cannot change those numbers. Okay, you guys should know by bonding, there's only going to be a certain number of bonds that can form based on the central atom and based on the needs of the atoms. Okay, so I mean, I can't manipulate those uh, coefficients, I can't manipulate those subscripts, but I can change the total number of um, molecules or atoms uh, per side by adding coefficients. And the coefficients will go in front of the uh, molecular formula, okay? Now, just to show you real quick, and I'll go ahead and balance this one, okay? If I go two hydrogen and two waters, then those four atoms become four, five, six atoms, and I have um, four hydrogens on the product side, plus I have two because the two is going to trans... Uh, for the oxygen as well, so I have two oxygen, four hydrogen, so I have six atoms. Okay, this is the basic uh, idea of what balancing is to make sure that the atoms on both sides are equal. Now, when we talk about in the next video, it can't just be any six atoms. You'll learn that we need to have exactly the same number of hydrogen on one side as we have the same number of hydrogen on the product side. 
Okay, so for example, this is a balanced chemical equation, and the reason being is because I have not six atoms and six atoms, but I have four hydrogens here, four hydrogens here, and two oxygens here, and two oxygens there. Okay, that's the reason why it's balanced. But for right now, I want you to just understand the importance of having the atoms be equal. Okay, tomorrow you're going to have an activity where you'll be given um, paper clips with different colors. Okay, just so you guys know what those colors mean. Okay, there are, um, there are not black ones, there are white, green, yellow, um, let's see, white, green, yellow, red, blue, and pink. All right, I'd write these down so you know, kind of a, have a basic understanding of what you're doing tomorrow. White is hydrogen, just like the model atoms, okay, or the atom models. Okay, green, take a wild guess. Those must be the halogens. They include fluorine, chlorine, bromine, iodine. Okay, yellow uh, is carbon. Now I know black was the carbon for the uh, was carbon for the models, but yellow is for the paper clips for this uh, activity. Okay. Red, like the models, is oxygen. Blue, like the models, actually no, the models were orange. Um, blue is for nitrogen. Okay. And then pink is going to be a metal. Now I didn't. Um, specify the types of metals, but because you're going to have a couple different equations where um, you'll need to use pink to represent the metal. And remember, a metal is anything that is not a non-metal. All right. So just to show you what you guys are going to do with this, I will give you a reactant and a product. So I will give you the unbalanced equation. You will need to build the unbalanced equation with these paper clips. Okay. Keep in mind that I want you to have common things bonded together, okay, or things that you know are bonded together, and uh, based on your rules of bonding. And then I want you to try to, you and a partner or two, trying to um, manipulate the number of atoms, or the number of um, total molecules on each side to balance it out, okay? And I'll give you an example right now. So you have this unbalanced equation, N2 plus H2 equals in H3. Now, obviously, if we counted up our um, atoms, we would go, hey, they're balanced. I have four atoms on the reactant side. I have four atoms on the product side. Everything must be good. But, of course, I can't change the identity of the atoms And I, when I balance equations. All I can do is change the number of them. So if I look at nitrogen on the reactant side, I have two atoms of nitrogen. If I look on the product side, I only have one. That means I must have destroyed or changed a nitrogen atom into a hydrogen atom and that can't happen okay so what you're gonna have okay and you're gonna have let's see blue of course, of course I don't have white for the hydrogen for this so I'll go ahead and use red okay so we'll have nitrogen into so here's your oops here's your nitrogen paper clips right there's your two paper clips there and then you'll have these two paper clips here Right, and then over here I have um, one nitrogen paper clip, and I'm going to have three hydrogen paper clips attached to it because I know that's what ammonia looks like. Okay, and when I say N2 and H2, that means I'm going to have, you know, our, oops. H, H, and N, N, right? So everybody's happy. That's the way they're supposed to be. And what you're going to do tomorrow is take this initial template right here and try to change the total numbers so you have of the total number of diatomic nitrogen or hydrogen and ammonia so they are equal on both sides of the arrow. Okay. No paper, no pencil, just you, your partner, and what's between your ears. Okay? You guys have any questions? Make sure you ask.